Hello, my name is Pastor Joe Azapardi. Last week, we began our Blessing on the Mount series, exploring Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, beginning in chapter 5 in Matthew. We're on day 7, looking at the seventh of nine Beatitudes. The seventh Beatitude is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. The Bible briefly tells the story of two groups of shepherds who were fighting over limited resources. If you've ever seen pictures of the Middle East, you would probably notice that there's not a whole lot of luscious vegetation happening. It's a very dry environment, offering very little fresh water, especially for large herds of animals. In Genesis chapter 13, we read about how Abraham traveled this area with his nephew Lot. And the combination of Abraham and Lot's livestock were way too many animals in one area for the land to bear. This resulted in a continual arguing and frustrations between Abraham's shepherds and Lot's shepherds. Now, it's important to understand that Abraham was viewed by the people of the land as a prince, due not only because of his princely behavior, but because Abraham was actually an extremely wealthy person. When Abraham is first introduced in Genesis, it mentions that he had a lot of property that he had acquired, he had a lot of servants, and a lot of livestock. And this was due not because of inheritance, his father was still alive when we were first introduced to him, it was probably because of a lot of hard work, wisdom, and blessings from God. Later on, Abraham is given even more wealth from Egypt's Pharaoh of the time. Now, the Bible records that Abraham also had a great deal of gold, silver, and gems. So we can imagine by how rich Abraham was that he had a lot of animals. And he was very, very rich. Abraham's nephew Lot also had some wealth and his own set of servants and livestock. Sometimes we picture a few shepherds arguing with half a dozen sheep in the background, but it would have been more accurate to picture herds of hundreds of animals and dozens of shepherds arguing over who was at the water hole first. Now it became clear to Abraham and Lot that they could not continue to share the same space peacefully. So being the older relative, and the richer and far more powerful person, Abraham actually had the right to tell Lot to leave while he took the choicest land for himself. Lot would have likely heeded Abraham, but maybe he would have left with a bit of a grudge. But being a man of peace and generosity and wanting to have goodwill between him and his nephew, Abraham gives Lot the choice of which piece of land that he would like for himself. Abraham tells him, you choose where you want to go. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. In the end, Lot chooses for himself. He doesn't let his uncle Abraham have the better space. He chooses what he believes is the best piece of land and heads in that direction. Uh, incidentally, he heads towards what was once the fertile area of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham heads the other way, which seems less than ideal, but Abraham believes that God will bless him regardless of which direction he goes in. For Abraham, peace was more valuable than what he owned. Peace was worth sacrificing for. Abraham doesn't do this out of cowardice. If you read the stories of Abraham, you'll notice that he was not only a spiritual businessman and leader, but he was a noble warrior who, in the very next chapter, he actually muscles up a huge amount of his own servants and leads a battle against a massive army because that army happened to take Lot, his nephew, captive. All too often, those who are trying to bring peace are seen as pushovers. But in reality, being a peacemaker involves personal sacrifice for the greater good. People such as Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, and Mahatma Gandhi are examples of people who put their own life on the line for the sake of bringing peace and equality to the world that they lived in. And they did it 
through non-violent means. Speaking of peacemakers and sacrifice, the ultimate example of peacemaking was that of Jesus, of whom Paul writes in Philippians 2, 6-8, Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Why would Jesus do it? Why would Jesus come down when he had everything he had in heaven, being all-powerful, having whatever he wanted? Why would he come down? Just as Abraham wanted to end the strife between the shepherds, Jesus chose to sacrifice himself so that those who choose to believe in him might have eternal life. And just as Abraham, Jesus had the upper hand. Jesus being unimaginably richer and more powerful than any person could ever be, did not have to come down as a child of peasants, a baby no less. He could have chosen not to die for our sakes, but because he valued the greater good, because he loved us so much, because he valued peace in the universe, he chose death for our sakes. Perhaps this is why peacemakers will be called sons and daughters of God, because they will have inherited Christ's characteristic of peace. The challenge question for today is, what are you willing to give up to bring about peace? Whether we're talking about bringing about peace in your home, or in your workplace, or at school, what are you personally willing to sacrifice? Maybe the sacrifice is pride. Maybe it's more tangible in nature. I don't know. But it's something for all of us to think about. Can I pray with you? Father in heaven, thank you so much for everyone who is watching and everyone who is um, part of your world we just ask that you would please help us to be peacemakers have help us not only to have peace but help us to bring about peace in others help those who are listening to this message today help them to be inspired to do something personally to bring about peace in the situations that they find themselves in we pray these things in jesus name amen Thank you so much for joining me. On Friday, we will be contemplating Matthew 5, verse 10. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God bless for now.